Hey guys, it's Silver, and I'm here today to talk to you about emotional amnesia, because while full or complete amnesia is talked about widely in the community and is well known outside of it, emotional amnesia is a subject that not as many people know about, and I think deserves just as much of focus as full or complete amnesia. Full or complete amnesia is the typical time loss, blackouts, another alter fronts, and you have no idea what was going on, and that time is just completely gone to you. This is what's most widely known outside of the DID and OSDD communities, and is what the media thinks a DID system is like all the time. Full amnesia is only experienced by DID and OSDD1A systems, whereas OSDD1B systems don't experience full amnesia. Which gets to the point, what do they experience? Which is where emotional or partial amnesia comes in. Emotional or partial amnesia, two names for the same thing, affect all types of systems because it's a basic component of dissociative barriers between parts. So, while DID and OSDD1A do experience the full amnesia of time loss and blackouts, they also experience emotional amnesia, so they often switch off between days, between different alters in the system, between different situations, what type of amnesia they're experiencing in a situation. But for OSDD1B systems like us, this is the only type of amnesia we experience. So, to get to the point, what exactly is emotional amnesia? Emotional or partial amnesia is an emotional disconnect from your memories of a situation that happened so that it feels like it's not you that experienced it. In our experience, it's most easily identified after an alter comes back to the front and looks back on the memories of what just happened. Our favorite metaphor for what emotional amnesia feels like is it's kind of like watching a movie, but of your own life. When you watch a movie, you're kind of taking in the experience, but you're not experiencing it yourself. So you're not emotionally reacting as if what was happening in the movie was directly happening to your own person. You're reacting to the situation that happened from a third person perspective. But when emotional amnesia is applied to your own life, this is what it feels like when looking back on your memories. When you look back on your memories when another alter fronts and you have emotional amnesia between the two of you, you react to them emotionally from a third person perspective. It doesn't feel like you actually went through them yourself. It just feels like you watched or you experienced. Not necessarily from like, I'm astral projected to a third person perspective and floating outside my body, but it feels like those memories were imported into your own head and it wasn't you experiencing those memories, which is kind of a really weird and freaky feeling. It's very much as if you watched a movie and then suddenly the memories of that movie as if they were from the perspective of one of the main actors is imported into your head. Doesn't feel like you're, they're your memories, but they're there anyways. And it wasn't you when those memories were made. I hope that all makes sense. Now, there's even more aspects of emotional amnesia that can impact certain systems. It might not impact all of them, but these are things that we've experienced. Another aspect of emotional amnesia that we experience is that memory transfer between alters has a little bit of lag time. For example, if Mia was fronting for a certain amount of time, and then Mia switched back in and I switched back out, and now I was fronting, if I wanted to go back and have all of Mia's memories that she just made right there, I'd have to take a little bit of time and look back at what happened to fully remember everything that Mia experienced. My favorite example for this little bit of lag time while processing memories between alters with emotional amnesia is kind of like taking a test. When there's no emotional amnesia experienced around a memory, it's kind of like taking a test that you've studied for a lot. You see a question, it's an easy question, you instantly know the answer. Versus with a memory that has emotional amnesia surrounding it, it's kind of like taking an open book test that you didn't study for. All of the answers are there, but it takes a little bit of time to search through the book and find them. And this amount of time varies depending on whichever alter that just switched back into the front, how close they were to the front when the first alter was fronting. So if here's the front and Mia's fronting right now and I'm this close to the front when she's fronting, when we switch, I will only have to do a short amount of looking through Mia's memories until I get a good idea of what happened. But if Mia's fronting and I'm all the way back here and totally not paying attention to what's going on in the front, when I switch with Mia, I will need to take a much longer time to kind of look through all the memories and fully get a sense of what's been going on. This is why when switching is triggered really fast for us, it's very hard to get a sense of what's going on and we feel very disoriented when we're shoved into the front. 
Whereas if we can take a little bit more time while we're switching and we can kind of reorient ourselves after we've switched out to the front, we have a better idea of what's been going on and how to orient ourselves in our current situation. Furthermore, this also ties into another thing we experience. I individually am already a very, very forgetful person. Even if I'm fronting the whole time, I will forget things I have to do, I'll forget where I put things, I'll forget people, events, times of the day, all sorts of things. It's just kind of a side effect of having a dissociative disorder. But if Mia fronts and then we switch and I look back on her memories, there is a much higher chance, on top of how forgetful I already am, that I will forget what happened for her. This is due to both the last thing that I just described where I have to look back through the memories to fully get an idea of what's going on in the situation and to another factor. There's a basic concept in psychology called emotional saliency. This is when the more emotionally attached an individual is to a specific memory, the stronger the connections are and the more likely the individual will remember it. So when we take this concept and apply it to what happens between alters in emotional amnesia, it only reinforces the fact that when alter A is fronting, there's a higher chance that alter B will forget what happened when alter A fronted. And thus, OSDD 1B systems who only experience emotional amnesia can still forget a lot of what their alters do, but oftentimes it's not right away. So I might remember what happened while Mia was fronting right after I switched back out, but give it a little bit of time, and there's a larger chance that I will forget what happened when she fronted than when I fronted. And there's already a high level of forgetfulness with the amount of state dissociation that just is a side effect of having a dissociative disorder. And to finish it all off, obviously I am not representative of all OSDD-1B systems out there, so they might experience a combination of the three things I talked about today, or they might even experience more things that I don't experience. But I hope this explanation can help you guys in some way and that you take something from this video. So thank you so much for watching and have an absolutely wonderful day.